Okay, everyone. Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Susan McGuire, and I'm Manager of Professional Development at ACCE, and I am happy to welcome you to today's webinar, the last webinar of 2017. So today we're going to hear from three chamber professionals who have renewed their leadership development programs through a variety of community coordination models, resulting in increased interest from the business community and revitalized program attendance. Presenting today will be Paige Mew, Community Development Director of the Fayette Chamber of Commerce in Fayetteville, Georgia, Kim Schnees, the Board Chair of the Fayette Chamber of Commerce, and Ebony Austin, Events and Leadership Development Coordinator of the Greenville Chamber in Greenville, South Carolina. And moderating our panel today will be our own Sarah Melby, ACCE's Director of Information and Research. So before I turn our program over to our panel, uh, I do have a few housekeeping notes. Um, the first is that attendees are in listen-only mode uh, during the webinar to avoid background noise. Uh, second, after the presentations, we will have time for questions, which you can ask by using the question function of the webinar. The question box is on the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Just type in your question, and I will read the question to our panel. If we run out of time and don't get to your question, or if you have a question that you would prefer to discuss with us individually offline, please feel free to contact our panelists directly. Um, their contact information will be included in the presentation towards the end, so it will be right there for you. And uh, we can also get in touch with you afterwards, after the webinar, if you ask a question and we just don't have time to get to it during the broadcast. Uh, third, this webinar is being recorded and should be up on the ACCE website on the ACCE webinar page uh, no later than Monday the 18th. Um, we will also post the presentation slides with the webinar recording. Um, Sarah's also posted the slides as a handout to this presentation. If you take a look at the right-hand side of the webinar panel towards the bottom, you'll see where the handout has been uploaded. Uh, just click on that handout to upload it. And if that link doesn't work for whatever reason or you just prefer not to access it during the webinar, no worries at all. Um, we will post it along with the recording, again, no later than Monday. So with that, I will introduce Sarah, our moderator, and then she will take it from there. Uh, Sarah Melby is ACCE's Director of Information and Research and manages the HERO team for help, expertise, and resources online for ACCE's members. Sarah has been with ACCE for four years and is a digital research librarian who worked in public and academic libraries before joining ACCE staff. Sarah enjoys helping ACCE's members connect to the information they need to help them accomplish more in their daily work. So, uh, Sarah, I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you so much, Susan. Hello and welcome. And I just want to say thank you for joining us today in the webinar on Renewing Your Leadership Development Program. So I just want to introduce this by saying the times are changing, as Bob Dylan once sang. We all know that uh, the times are definitely changing. Chambers have a long history of bringing emerging leaders to the table in leadership development programs. To keep up with the rate of change is driven by technology, business development, changes in political arenas, and in education. These leadership development programs are evolving to produce world-class leaders within chambers communities, to augment talented workforces, to drive local and regional economies, to create strong community partnerships, and to bring the voice of business to local government for greater advocacy, ultimately impacting what chambers are known for, improving where you live, work, and play. How do they evolve? How do these programs evolve? By listening to your community constituents, by building strong partnerships, and by being nimble to adapt to change. So we will see this all demonstrated through the two stories as told by Leadership Fayette and Leadership Greenville, and these chambers have renewed their leadership programs. I'd like to introduce and welcome our panelists for today. From the Fayette Chamber of Commerce in Fayetteville, Georgia, we have Paige Mew. She is Community Development Director. A resident of Fayette County since 2004, Paige has worked at the Fayette Chamber since early 2013. She serves as a Community Development Director overseeing the Chamber's communications, public policy, targeted industry sector programming, workforce and education initiatives, and leadership and community engagement initiatives. 
She has a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from the University of Georgia, and more recently she is a graduate of the Georgia Academy for Economic and Leadership Development. She is currently working on her IOM certification. Paige has two daughters, Anna, 17, and Rebecca, 15. And then with Paige, we also want to welcome Kim Schnees of Smart Path LLC and is also the 2017 Fayette Chamber Board, as well as the co-chair of Leadership Fayette. Combining her passion for education and experience as a, certi as a certified financial planner, Kim serves as a financial coach with Smart Path, a financial wellness organization dedicated to sharing unbiased financial guidelines with families. She uses her communication and collaboration skills to empower individuals to make smart choices about financial decisions and plan implementation. Previously, Kim worked in banking, economic development, and as a faculty member at Western Kentucky University. She has facilitated and coordinated leadership development programs in three Kentucky counties and currently co-chairs the Leadership Fayette Program. A dedicated community volunteer, Kim serves as a board member with various organizations, including the Fayette Chamber, Fayette Visioning, Fayette Senior Services, and the Atlanta chapter of Speedway uh, Children's Charities. She is also a graduate of the Atlanta Regional Commission's Regional Leadership Institute and the Philanthropic Advisors Leadership Institute. Kim and her husband, Mark, enjoy golfing, cycling, and traveling. And then from the Greenville Chamber of Commerce in Greenville, South Carolina, we have Ebony Austin, and she is the Events and Special Programs Director for the Greenville Chamber. Her responsibilities include, but are not limited to, directing all chamber-sponsored activities and events while supporting program managers by overseeing the execution of all event logistics and contract negotiations. Ebony also supports the Leadership Development Department and manages manages the Young Professionals programs. With a career that spans from social services, purchasing, and entrepreneurship, Ebony's role at the Chamber is one that allows her to use all her tools in her tool bag. Her passion for community shows through her engagement with the nonprofits that matter the most to her personal mission from the United Way African American Leadership Advisory Council to being in various leadership roles as a volunteer with the Greenville Chamber predating her employment. As a native of New York City, a mother of four, and a lifelong learner, Ebony finds that spending her free time with her family is most rewarding. A graduate, graduate of Southern Wesleyan University with a degree in business administration, Ebony enjoys being the crazy mom at her boy's sporting events and sampling her daughter's culinary baking creations. So I will turn it over to Paige and Kim now to hear the story of renewal from Leadership Fayette. Thank you, Paige and Kim, and I'm going to change our presenter over to you here so we can see your slides. All right. I'm excited to hear your story. So thanks, Paige and Kim, for being with us today. Thank you, Sarah, and thanks, Susan. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And we really want to thank ACCE for inviting Kim and I to come and share a little bit about our Leadership Fayette program with you. Um, before we get started, I do want to provide a brief overview about um, the Fayette Chamber and about our community for those of you who may not know too much about Fayette County. Um, I wonder if I should get rid of that. Whoops, nope, not that. Sorry. Um, do I have to get rid of that? Nope, okay. Um, the Fayette Chamber of Commerce just celebrated its 50th anniversary this year. We were founded in 1967. We have approximately 730 members. 90% of those are small businesses with less than 25 employees. In addition to our small businesses, we, there are many large industries that are um, in our county and involved in our chamber. The most notable these days is Pinewood Atlanta Studios, which has made its uh, home here in Fayette County um, in 2014. Pinewood Atlanta is the second largest movie studio in North America, and we are really proud that blockbuster movies like Ant-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming and the about to be released Avengers Infinity War were all filmed right here in Fayette County. We also have a strong presence of manufacturing industries in our counties, uh, in our counties such as Panasonic Automotive, Systems Company of America, Renai, Hoshizaki, Sigvaris, TDK Components, just to name a few. So a little bit about our county. Fayette County is located on the south side of Metro Atlanta and we're part of the 10 county um, Metro Atlanta statistical area. Um, and we're also proudly part of the um, 
state of Georgia, which has just been named the number one state to do business for the last four years in a row by Site Selection Magazine. Um, there are five municipalities in our county. We have Fayetteville, Tyrone, Brooks, Woolsey, and then one you may have heard about, Peachtree City, um, which is a 60-year-old planned community that has more than 100 miles of golf cart paths throughout our city and more than 10,000 registered golf carts that are used by our citizens every day. Our county, Fayette County, has a population of about 112,000 people. Some of our county's greatest assets I wanted to share with you. We are located 20 miles south of the nation's number one ranked busiest airport, Hartsville-Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Our school system is nationally renowned and one of the top ranked in the state. And our county's hospital, Piedmont Fayette Hospital, has been ranked by health grades as one of the top 50 hospitals in the nation for the last four years. So now I'm going to turn it over to Kim, and she's going to review what we'll cover today, and then she's going to give you some history about Leadership Fayette. So today we thought we'd share with you some history and pivot points of Leadership Fayette. We discussed rebuilding our leadership program, our current program, reviewing some program reflections, and then also what's on the horizon for Leadership Fayette. So Leadership Fayette started in 1980 and remains one of the Fayette Chamber's longest-running program initiatives, having had classes most every year from 1980 through 2011. During this time, Leadership Fayette focused on five core areas, justice, economic development, local industry, health and human services, and education. Class members visited a different key area each month with the goal of improving their leadership skills and getting to know the community. The program was organized using volunteer leaders with minimal chamber staff support. The class project was a community benefit project focused on a charity or civic organization and by 2011, the class project had evolved into a fundraising endeavor. Concerned the program lost relevancy and rigor in its curriculum and also recognizing leaders in the 21st century required different skill sets, our then president and CEO of the Fayette Chamber, Virginia Gibbs, intentionally placed the program on a brief hiatus, taking time to consider the leadership challenges within our community, to research the foundational elements of the program, and to consider the relevancy of the program for class participants, community, and the Fayette Chamber. Virginia identified two community volunteers to assist with the Leadership Fayette rebuilding. Dr. Tim Hines, president of Clayton State University, and myself, Kim Schnees, both of whom had knowledge of leadership principles and experience with curriculum development in a university environment. Together with Virginia, all three recognized the importance of building a leadership program inclusive of leadership principles and focused on elements of critical thinking and problem solving. We spent a year conversing with Leadership Fayette alumni and community leaders to assist in building both the curriculum and the program's credibility. Our overall progr program goal was helping leaders understand the interconnectedness of community sectors by taking a 30,000 foot view. For example, if you fly over your community, the landscape includes the five core areas of education, economic development, industry, health and wellness, and justice. Decisions made in any one of these areas eventually affects all areas. So if the community values a strong education system, this will attract parents who value education, leading to students who become responsible citizens and eventually serve as a talent pipeline for the industry. However, if decisions are made that weaken education, Students have a higher probability of becoming juveniles in trouble, which then reduces the health of the community and the ability to attract industry and talent. Understanding the interconnectedness of the community segments reduces the probability of unintended consequences that can harm a community's prosperity. So most of the program changes occurred in the areas of application processes, which Paige will cover in the next segment, and curriculum. So throughout our curriculum development discussion, we recognize the importance of maintaining a foundation of topics similar to the prior program, including economic development, education, health and wellness, and justice, addressing both a shift in general leadership training from hierarchical to transformational, and given our community conversations, we added two topics, creative class or diversity, and civil discourse. We intentionally focused on creating a program organized with the flexibility for each class to learn important foundational elements and then customize curriculum around current community conversations. We were also intentional about creating an interactive culture with experiential learning opportunities. Panelists or presenters were encouraged to share information in a dynamic, interactive, conversational style. 
and believing an important part of leadership involves knowing your own personal characteristics and strengths, we adopted the use of the DISC assessment to give participants a window into themselves and their interaction with others. Given the shift from a show-and-tell experience to more of an interactive discussion environment, we wanted to gauge the impact of the rebuilt program. To accomplish this, we were diligent in our use of evaluations, and at the end of each session in 2014, class participants were given surveys to complete by hand. Those surveys were reviewed and tabulated. The curriculum team met the next day to review class participant results and also discuss the day's agenda and our performance. Focusing on both program reviews and personal reviews, we often ask the following questions. What changes should we make the next year? How did we frame the conversation? Were the participants engaged and what discoveries were shared? Our conversations were direct and we shared our real thoughts towards outcomes. However, by this time as a team, we had worked together for 12 to 18 months, had taken ownership of the program and recognized the comments were shared in the spirit of continuous improvement of the program for our participants and our current Leadership Fayette program continues to be a very participant-centric program. I'll now turn it over to Paige. So uh, since the revitalization, we're currently on our third iteration of the program. Um, and as Kim said, um, there was a great deal of change for our application and selection process. Uh, but since 2014, what we put in place has relatively remained the same. So we accept um, applications from people who live work or are stakeholders in Fayette County, they do not have to be chamber members to apply. Um, the applications are pretty standard, um, but they also require essays about leadership and community involvement. Um, on the application, both the applicant and the employers of the applicant must sign an attendance agreement that guarantees their commitment to giving the time needed to attend all um, Leadership Fayette sessions. After the application deadline, all the accepted applicants are then interviewed by a team of Leadership Fayette alumni, which is a great way for engagement for those alumni. Um, during that interview process, the alumni will also spend time reviewing program expectations with the applicants, and then they'll make a recommendation to program leadership um, for acceptance into the program. Since 2014, we've typically had about 30 to 32 applications. Um, and our class size has been approximately 20 to 25 class members. Um, it is an eight-month program, and that tuition for those full-day sessions um, is $795. So current curriculum. Um, the program leadership team, as Kim has mentioned, is made up of the two volunteer co-chairs, which continues to be Kim and then Dr. Tim Hines. Um, as well as two chamber staff members. That is a change um, from just volunteer leadership to chamber leadership as well. Um, our CEO, Carlotta Ungaro, and myself both serve as uh, program co-chairs. Um, our leadership team not only serves as the curriculum planning team, but we are also the session facilitators. Um, we are really proud that Panasonic Automotive Systems Company of America, one of our large indus uh, manufacturing industry partners here in Fayette County, has been our presenting sponsor for this um, program uh, for each of the um, program years, 2014, 2016, and again this year, the class of 2018. Um, great partnership on their behalf. The curriculum sessions, as Kim said, focus on the same topics every year, the um, very typical economic development, education, diversity, health and community wellness, the justice, and civil discourse and governance. Um, in order to demonstrate the facets of each of these sectors, our sessions include presentations from, the, from local, regional, and state leaders. Um, we obviously do tours. We um, try to make it very interactive. We do role plays. Um, we have panel discussions, and we have hands-on activities. The intent really is to demonstrate real situations, real challenges, and real opportunities that are here in Fayette County. And we want to allow our class participants to gain firsthand experience in these, sec in these sectors. And while the core content of each of the session remains the same year to year, um, we, there is variation um, from year to year that is based on the current trends um, and the current needs and the current focuses within our community. So there is variation within those. 
So now I wanted to tell you just a few changes that we have refined since um, the revitalization in 2014. Um, as Kim mentioned, in 2014, the program was created under our then president and CEO of the Chamber, Virginia Gibbs. Um, she gave considerable input on the new program. But Virginia actually retired from our chamber at the end of that year in 2014, and uh, Carlotta Ungaro came on board, board in early 2015. Um, we really benefited from the fact that Carlotta had had experience in um, several local, state, and regional, cham uh, regional leadership programs across the Southeast throughout her career. So it was wonderful when she arrived, she embraced our program in its current format, and we just moved right on forward um, with our next program cohort um, in 2016. Um, after some feedback in the from the 2016 class, we did make an adjustment to our program run dates. The 2014 and 26 programs ran from a, on a calendar year, from January to August. Um, in 2017, we changed the program to run on a school calendar year from August to April um, to sort of not have it run over a summer a summer calendar, a summer month um, from the school year, and we definitely in that um, school year calendar take a month off in December for the holidays. And from a classroom management perspective, here's something that we are finding. We're probably we're noticing something that probably um, many of you are noticing as well. We are noting some trends um, within our class concerning all day attendance and all day engagement as well as, honestly, just some classroom etiquette issues um, regarding cell phone usage during our session. We um, speculate and realize that we know it's hard for, in our current culture, that it's getting harder and harder for people to disengage from their workplace when they have their cell phone in their hand, um, and that is something that we constantly are addressing. So. Um, one of the um, big additions to our revitalized program was the addition of an, of an assigned class project. So program leadership intentionally um, selected a required class project that would focus on the Civic Health Index. This specific project was chosen because it encompasses all sectors of our community and enables um, our class teams to focus on four specific areas, social connectedness, confidence in institutions, political action and participation, and community involvement. The project requires the class members to specifically identify successes and obstacles within our Fayette community in those specific areas. For the 2018 class, we've drilled down even deeper on this civic health project, and we've added a national survey component. So our leadership Fayette class has partnered on a national and state civic health survey that's going to allow us to take Fayette-specific data and then benchmark, um, set some benchmarks for ourselves for comparison with other communities our size, and then also against ourselves on an ongoing basis. And so the result is a class project that's not only beneficial to our leadership Fayette participants as a capstone leadership project, but it also provides um, very valuable me metrics that are a benefit to our chamber and our community as a whole. So, Kim? So, in sharing reflections on our program, as Paige mentioned, after having graduated the class of 2014 and 16 and having the third underway, some of our reflections include the following. Limit agendas to two to five objectives and narrow the topics covering only the most important aspects. Showcase only those organizations or topics that are most relevant to the session's objectives and be prepared for in-depth conversations. Share with guest speakers the intent to speak with the participants and not at them, thereby encouraging conversation. And focus each session on content, not on logistics. Consistently evaluate and adapt the leadership program to maintain both relevancy and rigor for participants and the community. In planning current sessions, we consistently hold each other accountable to the following. More is not always better. Sometimes it's just more. And by having clarity in the session's objectives and relevant topics, we avoid falling into information and activity overload. Now, of course, recognizing this took time. The evolution of our education session from 2014 to our current session is a great example. Another item that we discovered is the importance of providing participants with time to experience different environments 
such as visiting the county jail or touring the hospital. However, in exposing participants to different environments and topics, it's necessary to build in time for participants to decompress, discuss, and debrief about their personal thoughts or takeaways from the experience. Using the jail as an example, it can be difficult to mentally process the images of seeing community members in jail and walking the halls with prison guards and security cameras. So after engaging in this experience, being very strategic about building time in the day's agenda and encouraging conversation by asking questions such as, how do you feel about what you observed? In addition to questions framing the conversation around the importance and interconnectedness of the community justice center. So what's next on our horizon? Next steps for, on Leadership Fayette include identifying meaningful programs or projects to keep our alumni engaged and active, planning for the succession of our Leadership Fayette volunteer curriculum co-chairs. While both served board terms during their tenure with Leadership Fayette, it's important for the program sustainability to provide similar opportunities for others. Also, having a focus on the continuity of leadership development opportunities with our, within our own community. For example, identifying and complementing a youth program perhaps in high school, having an emerging leaders program for young professionals or those new to our community, such as a half-day leadership fay and immersion opportunity, and encouraging our graduates to participate in regional and state leadership programs. For example, the Regional Leadership Institute through the, through the Atlanta Regional Commission or Leadership Georgia. So we want to share a few data points with you that just show um, some of the leadership impact of our revitalized program that it's had since 2014. Um, and these are just on those alumni in these three um, classes. So of these alumni, three class participants have actually uh, decided to run for elected office. Um, two have been successful in that campaign. Ten of our alumni since 2014 either currently have served or have served on our Chamber Board of Directors. And we have five alumni who have taken an active leadership role in our community visioning initiative called Fayette Visioning. And we really think that the impact of Leadership Fayette was best summed up by one of our 2016 alumni, Jamie Tapp, who um, works for Hartsville-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, and we wanted to just share her, what she shared with us. Jamie says, Leadership Fayette was an incredibly fulfilling experience that truly fostered a culture of service. The curriculum was comprehensive, covering so many critical components of life and business in Fayette County in interesting and interactive lessons. The most valuable, lasting benefits are the deep relationships developed with my fellow classmates, instructors, and local subject matter experts. So we really wanted to share that with you um, and thought that summed it up well. So as it is with most chambers, providing leadership development programs really are part of our core mission. And the ACCE Horizon 2025 initiative really served as the foundation for several of our Fayette Chamber board meetings, as well as our recent board retreat. And as a program of the chamber, Leadership Fayette focuses on several of the Horizon 2025's eight influences. Through Leadership Fayette, our participants are given the opportunity to build relationships with community and industry leaders forming a network, enabling them to be both transformational and transaction, transactional with other community members. And by focusing on the interconnectedness of our community sectors and leaders, we provide a basis for the implementation of getting something done through catalytic leadership. And we recognize that the important role our chamber provides really is in serving as the same center and encouraging conversations which ultimately will affect change in the Fayette community. So we thank y'all for uh, letting us share. We wanted to provide our contact information, and we will turn it back over to Sarah and to Ebony. Great. Thank you so much, Paige and Kim. This was just really educational and inform informational. Um, we do have uh, their resources. That's included in the slide deck. Many of the resources that Paige and Kim talked about, the survey, some of the agendas, um, that's included in the slide deck towards the end under resources. So um, again, thank you so much. And now we're going to zoom in on Leadership Greenville and uh, welcome Ebony Austin for um, being here and also sharing your story. So I'm going to change this over to Ebony right now and we'll zoom in on Leadership Greenville. Okay. Hi guys, I'm here. Um, thank you again for having me. Can you all see 
the screen pretty good on your end, I'm supposing. Um, you look my name great, Ebony. Austin. Ebony. All right, can you see us? Yes, you look great. Perfect. Um, as mentioned, my name is Ebony Austin. I'm with the Greenville Chamber, um, and I have recently been promoted to Events and Special Programs Manager, um, but up until that point, I have been working very closely with our director, Tammy Miller, on all of our leadership development programs, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we transition through the slides. So the Greenville Chamber, our tagline is, let's do something that matters today. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about our area. As you can see, the Greenville area is bustling and growing. We were just voted number two um, best place to do business in America. And I think that says a lot about this little town in Greenville that is in the upstate area. Um, South Carolina is a big place, and the upstate is one of the best regions for business, as well as we are known for our philanthropy within this region. So that is one of the cornerstones to a lot of our programs is based off of um, the giving that you will hear more about as we transition. So Leadership Greenville was um, is a very cornerstone project uh, program to the Greenville Chamber. This particular program has been in formation for over 127 years of the Greenville um, being, Chamber being around, and this program particularly was started in 1973. Of the Greenville Chamber leadership development programs, we have the Leadership Greenville Program, the Alumni Opportunity Greenville, Ignite Greenville, which is a corporate leadership day, and our Young Professionals, which is called Pulse, and our Youth Leadership Greenville. This flagship program of the Greenville Chamber has participants of over 2,000 year to date. Um, we have had a great number of participants to come through, and that keeps increasing year over year. Uh, we have maxed out on the number of participants that we will be able to accept into the program, um, but the applications still keep funneling in um, very rapidly. Each class day that we take uh, our participants through is a journey to embark upon what's happening within the community, and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about what that looks like um, a little bit later on into the program. The class day, the class itself um, for each participant is a 10-month commitment. Um, this commitment is made on the front end. Um, it is very much known in the application and in the advertising and marketing what you're walking into. Oftentimes we've heard from past participants that while this was very clear that this was a 10-month long commitment, um, they had no idea just how much of a commitment it really was until they got into it. So while we have 10 class days, there are oftentimes workshops that are still running um, throughout the course of the month that they can attend. They are highly recommended but not mandatory. The class days are mandatory. Um, we do not have a commitment from the employer. This is a person, a personal commitment from the individual who participates, um, and that commitment can extend from that individual to their com their company, um, but the B2B is not where we stand. We stand more on the individual. This is a picture of our class for 2017. Um, this is our class number 44. Uh, we will begin starting applications for class 45 in 2018 in March. Um, those applications will go live. But this is a class that just shows you a very uh, diverse group of individuals who can vary uh, from young professionals all the way through our senior leaders in the community. Um, it is a very reputable program that we offer, and again, very competitive. Our average class size is 55 to 60 participants. Our fees per participant for chamber investor is $2,750, um, and for non-investors, it's $3,200. The incentive is to hopefully get those organizations um, to join the chamber if they are paying for that participant to go through the program. Our annual revenue for this particular program is an estimate of $130,000 that we, we generate, and our expenses roughly are about $70,000 to offset this program. Our workshops and tours are, uh, they vary. Um, they can be anything from walking tours um, of a cemetery, which has a lot of history behind them, 
Um, we have also other projects that we provide for them, like a textile tour. Greenville was a very heavy textile community. Um, therefore, there is a lot of history that still remains in our area that we'd like to get our community leaders engaged in so they can understand um, why some of those buildings are still around, kind of the history and the foundation of where we've come from, and why textile is still a very important part of our community in manufacturing. Um, this is also a very art centric area where we have lots of um, art and foodie and et cetera. And so we encompass portions of that within our um, tours and workshops. We also have a workshop for diversity and inclusion led by our Dr. Nika White. Um, this program that she puts out for the leadership class is NCBI training. Um, that training in particularly is to help individuals just to understand and unmask um, different cultures, um, diversity, and in general as it relates to race, ethnicity, gender, age, et cetera. We also do, uh, much like the Fedville Chamber, um, a correctional tour. This has been a very um, eye-opening experience for all of our participants that take place in this workshop. Uh, again, none of these workshops are mandatory, but we find that the majority of the class members do participate in these workshops. Uh, but the Perry Correctional has been very eye-opening for a lot of individuals who aren't on the other side of the fence in the Justice Department or in the social realm of things, for them to see firsthand um, and hear from some of the uh, inmates in that facility what this community is doing to combat some of the um, recidivism rate that we see. Um, it ties directly into some of our workforce issues that we discuss oftentimes within our chamber. Um, and it is just very much a good opportunity for people to understand what's happening within the correctional system. Uh, we also do a ride along. Um, Greenville County, Greenville City, police officers take um, our class participants one at a time on a ride along. These are scheduled in advance. They get to ride with them and actually be present in that moment. Ironically, I was riding with one of our current class members yesterday for something that's completely outside of Leadership Greenville, but we were talking about her experience with this ride along. And she mentioned to me how um, the gentleman said the officer she was riding with, he was just pulling people over for tail light out, expired tag, and, and she just looked at him and said, are we really going to do this all day? Is this what you do all day? And he said to her, chaos breeds chaos. And what he meant by that is if they couldn't keep their tag up to date or the maintenance on their vehicles up to date, chances are there was a little something else going on with these individuals. And and she shared that with me, um, and I thought that was very a very good um Quote, chaos breeds chaos, and for that, um, this ride-along experience is different for each individual that participates, but each one that comes out of it has always been moved and touched by some level of stories that they have brought along with them. Here's a little bit of what the entire agenda looks like for our leadership class. Um, they open up with an orientation. This orientation is something that is communicated, um, again, on the front end. One of the prerequisites for this program or for you to participate, you have to be available for the opening retreat. That is a mandatory session for all participants. Um, at the opening session, we go through this agenda. We talk through what the class days will look like. You get to meet your fellow classmates, um, and, and it is just a really informal session for people to really meet and greet. The real nitty-gritty work happens at the retreat, um, which happens in August. Hours run similar to our calendar year for our schools um, from August until May. In August, when you go down to this opening retreat, it is an overnight retreat um, meant for team building, collaboration, and again, unmasking some of the um, barriers and the fears that may be there for individuals who are just getting into this program and not really knowing what to expect. Um, this is probably one of, as well as the closing retreat, one of the most um, anticipated portions of this entire experience for all participants. Within that um, agenda for the year, we cover items such as leadership and teams, history and economy, local government, human services, justice, state government, education, culture and community. 
Um, and then we have a graduation ceremony that is pretty formal where we, in, we invite the class and they can invite their spouses or an individual to attend plus one. Uh, we put on a big, big show for them, have graduation um, certificates that are framed for them for completing the program, um, a really nice dinner uh, with, with beverages, um, and a really nice celebration of those who have completed it. Um, coming out of that closing retreat, individuals have cried. Um, it has been very life-changing for them. We've oftentimes seen a lot of these folks step into a lot of different arenas within our community, whether it's changing roles from corporate to nonprofit executive directors or leading the charge in, um, in policies and change um, and being um, active in our, our local government. Um, after you graduate Leadership Greenville, you become an alumni. Um, part of that alumni program association is large. We've got over 2,000 people who have gone through our program and they are a part of this alumnus. Um, this alumni group is really robust with individuals who have been from class one who are still engaged with the chamber all the way to our present day class. Uh, we don't, we used to, we have just recently transitioned into a new model for our alumni. It used to be that you paid an alumni dues to be a part of this. Now it is, um, because we've got a great sponsor, it is now free to be a part of the alumni group and you pay per event. So we will put on several events throughout the course of the year. Here's a few examples of those. We have um, we had one in September. We had one in November where Mike Reardon, who is the Vice President of Greenville Health Systems Foundation, came and spoke, um, who is also an alumnus of the Greenville uh, Leadership Greenville. Uh, we have Deb Sofield coming in February to speak to us as well over a fireside chat is what we call those, where it's just a small intimate group and we just have conversation surrounding whatever the subject matter may be for that particular event. Um, Deb is the Greenville Waters uh, Commissioner and she has a wealth of information. She also has a podcast, an e-letter. She's very well known, a public speaker, and she's also an alumnus of Leadership Greenville. And then in March, um, we will have our second annual leadership summit. Um, last year, this was, was the first year that we did the summit. We had a great attendance. It was a great turnout. We started off with a keynote uh, and then broke out into group sessions with individual um, topics. And then we reconvened and, and sent everybody home. But it was a, dip, a deep dive into some really strong subject matters that are impacting our community. Here's some of our alumni. Um, Russell Stahl, actually, not only is he an alum of Leadership Greenville, he was just newly elected in November as our city councilman. Um, he also worked alongside with Tammy through, for 13 years, helping to facilitate some of our class days. He's an outstanding individual. He has so much knowledge that, to share with the leadership class. He's extremely passionate about the Greenville Chamber as well as Leadership Greenville, and he provides a lot of support to us, also being a mentor in our Pulse Young Professional Pace Setters Mentoring Program. Don Kuntz is a historian. Um, he also does all of the history for the Greenville Chambers Leadership Greenville Program, Opportunity Greenville. We tap into his resources quite often, but Don is a legend. Um, he was in our leadership class um, too, I believe it was, and was unable to complete the class because he was filming something for Leadership Greenville, and because of his poor attendance, he was asked to exit the program. So that will show you a little bit about how our expectation for attendance is, is definitely met, um, and we abide by those rules pretty firmly, including some of our facilitators who are unable to uh, maintain attendance policies. We tell them, try again next year. And so Don came back. Um, and he is a graduate of class 24. We also have a Pay It Forward program um, that rolled out this year. This Pay It Forward program is that the class of 2017, our class 44, embedded in their fees is also a LG alum Pay It Forward fee. That fee is indicated, it's, it's to help provide scholarships for individuals who may have hardships with being a part of the program. Um, that is an initiative that we work towards to help uh, diversify our program. That is something that ha we have seen in our area as a barrier has been the fees for us to get a 
good diverse class. So we try to find ways to be able to do that. This automatically rolls these current class members into the alumni, um, and that money is then used for other experiential opportunities within um, LG. Here's a few testimonials. Um, our city mayor, John Castile, he has gone through it. He is um, um, a LG graduate, and he has written a testimonial for us. We've got an entrepreneur, Dorothy Self, who works with Creative Concepts, and she has also shared some testimonials as well. All of this information can also be found on our website. Here's a little information about our demographics and what our classes typically look like. We have, a, as you can see, um, the large base of our participants in this program are African, are Caucasian. Um, we have 2% Asian, 1% Hispanic, and we're working on changing those demographics every year by recruiting, by sending out information um, to areas where we probably wouldn't necessarily um, promote through our marketing efforts and through our collaborations with other business leaders. So this brings me kind of to where the evolution of things have changed for the Greenville Chamber. Um, the Greenville Chamber in 2016, we got a new president, CEO, Carlos Phillips. Carlos came from a community that was similar to ours, but very different. Um, when he came in for 100 days, he toured around our city, and he went on what he calls a listening tour. And what he heard from the community was a lot of different things. And out of that came our new Vice Chair for Leadership Development, Adela Mendoza. She is a Hispanic female. She is part of our nonprofit um, world, and she sits on the board representing our Leadership Development Program. And Tammy and I work very closely with her to keep her abreast of the day-to-day -day operations of things that are happening within the programs as we try to identify opportunities for improvement. Let's just say our program is not broken. It works very well. We do not have any challenges with getting high caliber participants. We have a very robust program. We have a lot on our plates within leadership development, which oftentimes takes away from us having those opportunities to take deeper dives into the program. So it's oftentimes we found ourselves on autopilot. So the challenge came with our new leadership to really use our event matrix to see how we can identify opportunities for improvement within the Greenville Chamber collectively in all events. And leadership development fell within that for us to see what we do really, really well and what someone else may be doing better than us. It wasn't necessarily a revenue-driven factor. It was more, is someone else doing this? And if they are, are they doing it better than we are? And, of course, there's no other leadership development program quite like Leadership Greenville. We are doing this, and we are doing it well. But there were some other things that we were doing within leadership development, such as our Youth Leadership Greenville program, which is geared towards our uh, rising junior, senior class, um, for high school, that while it was very great thing to do, very well received within the community, it didn't necessarily align with our mission. And our mission for the Greenville Chamber was to lead, convene, and mobilize a business community to drive regional economic growth. And we accomplished those things through advocating, connecting, developing, advancing, and inclusion. And while Youth Leadership Greenville may check some of those boxes, it wasn't necessarily something that fell in our lane. So for 2018, as we looked at all of the programs we have within Leadership Greenville, we decided that we were going to find a new home for our Youth Leadership Greenville program, which would then free up a great amount of time for our director, who can then take a look at our Leadership Greenville class days and figure out how we can best take deeper dives into things that were really working well but could work better. So our applications currently run from February, close out in April. 
notifications are sent out to the participants, um, to the applicants in June who are selected in the class. And as you see, everyone gets their letter. They show up in June for the opening session, and then we begin the retreat in August. So there's a lot of things that we have talked about, um, but within this here, I'll go back to this slide because it's important you understand that while Tammy is the director um, and I coordinate with her, there are a lot of other hands and volunteers within this pot. And how we evolved into where we're moving forward into this year is by streamlining some of these processes. We had a lot of volunteers, there was a lot of cooks in the kitchen, and we were having a hard time being able to decipher whether we were working or spinning our wheels in the mud. So Tammy outlined our chair, um, vice chair and advisory council for Leadership Greenville, similar to the one that we utilize for our young professionals. This was to help us to plan, to execute, to be able to get some good ideas, and everyone that's within that leadership program, uh, advisory council, are past leadership participants. So what they brought to the table was a firsthand experience of what was happening for them as individuals as well as their class um, to help us to better our program, to make things richer, um, deeper, and even to help facilitate at some of the sessions as needed. So I think that pretty much um, sums it up for us. Here's my contact information if you um, need to get in contact with me for anything. Uh, but ultimately, that's, that's Leadership Greenville. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ebony. That's really um, a, a, a wonderful zoom in on your program as well as Paige and Kim's uh, Leadership Fayette program. Um, what I really enjoyed seeing here is how we can um, uh, see how these leadership programs really showcase the unique aspects of your communities and what you've done to build upon what makes your community special. Um, one thought I had as a um, ACC Director of Information Research, um, when Ebony mentioned her event matrix, I um, just wanted to mention that that is included in the um, resources that we have inside the uh, tool, the uh, PowerPoint here. So we'll switch this back over. We have a few more minutes to um, have question and answer, so please use the question panel on your GoToWebinar side and um, type in your question. We'll read it aloud and our panelists will be able to answer. And again, we have the contact information for both Paige and um, Kim as well as Ebony and then myself. So we are here to help um, provide examples or resources or um, if you would like additional information about their programs, um, they're all happy to um, answer and again, want to say thanks to, to all of our panelists today for providing this zoom in a lens on their programs. So just going to watch the question uh, panel here on my end and see if you all have any um, notes here. Oh, okay. So there is a question. Um, let's see here. So, Ebony, how does your application work? Are the applicants interviewed, and if so, by whom? Our application works um, through a selection committee. There is a very robust uh, matrix that we use to score each individual applicant, um, and I will need to clean it up, but I will be glad to share that with you guys as well. Um, but it is definitely a very robust Excel spreadsheet that has lots of different factors in it. Um, the application itself has deep, deep essays, um, resume must be attached. You must have a community service resume as well. You must also have recommendation letters. And all of those things are taken into account when scoring um, each individual applicant. Thanks, Ebony. That's great. Uh, this is a question for Paige and Kim. What were your five community segments? Are, um, are you talking about for that we focus on in our sessions or in our um, class project? Let's see. If the asker is still online, can you clarify that? Just watching for so, your reply there. So the so the five community segments, which really are the foundational elements, 
would be justice or law enforcement is what some folks might call that, economic development, health and wellness, and, and during our health and wellness day, we have a tendency to focus on our area hospital as well as um, our nonprofit organizations or what we refer to as safety nets. Education is another large one. And the economic development as well. Or, or mm -hmm. and including and including local industry in that too. Thanks, Kim. That's great. Um, the other couple of other questions coming in. Um, one question was, how, will we receive the slides with the contact information? And yes, that's all going to be available as part of the webinar. Um, you can access this webinar recording from the ACCE website under professional development. And um, that's part of the ACCE university offering. So we'll have a, the recorded webinar as well as this whole PowerPoint slide deck. But it is also available in the handout section of your GoToWebinar panel. So you can just download the entire slide deck right from your handouts there. It's a, again, PowerPoint uh, file. And let's see here, it's time for maybe one or two more. Um, this question is for Ebony. Can you share a little bit more detail on what the goal or agenda is for your clothing retreat at Leadership Greenville? That's a great question. I, I don't really necessarily think there's a goal. I think it is a recap of the year. Um, there's a lot of testimonials shared within the group. Um, the group had, formulates a really tight bond. Um, I oftentimes compare it to a fraternity sorority combined together, right? And everyone just really, really loves each other, and they represent their class so much. They've spent 10 months, months of their lives together. So a lot of it is reflections. Um, a lot of it has to do with their projects. There is a project um, that they all have to participate within, so they reflect on those. Um, a lot of fundraising is done within those projects, but they just really spend that time team building again and reflecting upon the 12 month journey, the 10 month journey that they just went on. Thank you. I think this question is also for Ebony. The Civic Health Index was that uh, Leadership Greenville or Fayette? Leadership Fayette. Oh, Fayette. Okay, so the question is, I'm interested in exploring civic health, the Civic Health in Index. Is this available from a public source? So it is. Um, if you do just some searching on, say, the National Civic Health Index, there are several entities that combine to, do, to really start the movement. And, and if memory serves, the National Civic Health Index was an initiative that occurred initially back in the early to mid 2000s, and so it was something that um, that we adopted as the project because it focused on the four different areas and enabled enabled us to go deeper within our own community. And then where that has evolved to is because the Fayette Chamber is the primary implementer of Leadership Fayette, um, we were searching for a project that we could utilize that was meaningful not only for our community but also for our chamber. So that's where we're looking at gaining some information through benchmarking. So in the state of Georgia, um, some of the entities that are involved, one is the, the Georgia Family Connections, the Georgia Family Partnership, um, the Fanning Institute over at the University of Georgia, so within your own state, uh, most likely there may be some type of an independent initiative focusing on the civic health. Thank you, Kim. Um, I think we, we, we do have more questions, but I know we're at the top of the hour. Um, we will have our panelists respond to those of you who have asked uh, a few more questions. So we can get your answers, um, those answers over to you all. So um, just want to say thank you again to everyone for attending and a big a special thanks to um, our panelists, to Kim and Paige and to Ebony. And uh, um, again, we'll turn this back over to Susan for final remarks. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. This was fascinating. I love um, being able to sit back and hear all about these terrific programs and the impacts that they've made on your respective communities. So thank you so much for sharing 
your experiences and being willing to, you know, to share them um, with our other members. Uh, thank you, everyone else, for your great questions and your present your uh, participation as well. We really appreciate it. Um, just one more reminder that the webinar is recorded. The recording will be posted on our webinar page along with the presentation slides, and look for that no later than Monday, the 18th. Um, so how do you find those slides? You go to our website, www.acce.org. You click on Professional Development, hover over ACCE University Online, and then click on Webinars. Um, so it should be there on Monday, if not before. And this is our last ACCE University webinar for the 2017 calendar year. And all of us at ACCE wish you all, your chambers and your communities, Happy holidays and a happy, successful, and prosperous 2018. I will be sending out information about our 2018 webinar schedule shortly after the new year. Um, and so if you have ideas for webinars of interest to you, or if you're available to present a webinar, we love that. I'd love to talk to you, so please, uh, please be in touch. Uh, my contact information is smcguire, S-M-C-G-U-I-R-E at acce.org. And uh, my contact information is also on the ACC website. So thank you again, everyone, Sarah, Paige, Kim, Ebony, and all participants for uh, sharing your expertise today and to everyone else for your participation and interest. Wishing you all a great afternoon. Thanks much. Bye-bye.